um, basically, the highest grade of education that I completed was the sixth grade. First time ever having a job is Habitat for Humanity at 33 years of age. So I guess the question is, what can I possibly talk about? All I have, I guess, to say of an accomplishment at this point is that I was incarcerated from the age of 18 to the age of 33, a few months shy of 15 years. Somewhere during my 12th year, I was probably 29 or 30 years old, and I was alone in that place. And it kind of like dawned on me that here I was, 30 years old, but I had no idea what living was. I had no idea what life was all about. I had nothing to call my own. All of my personal belongings would foot fit inside of what we called a foot locker, which was about yay big and a little floor locker similar to the one in gymnasiums in school. That was my world. That was my living room. That was my kitchen. That was my bathroom. That was my temple. That was my classroom. I had been to places when I was free. I remember we used to go to the dance or to the party. Everybody would be dancing, and, and, and me and mine would be standing up against the wall, too paranoid to get involved. So even though I went to that dance, I didn't really experience that dance. I used to say that the guy that was out there dancing and doing what you do at dances was a clown. But if you think about it, here I am at a party. Good music, beautiful women, and drinks, and food, and I'm standing there scared to move because I'm too paranoid about the brother next to me. That's not living, brother. They say that you can take a person out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of a person. Basically, that means wherever you go, you take everything that you are with you. So I had been to school. But did I learn anything? Maybe. <coughs> Sixth grade, you tell me. See, I couldn't pay attention in school because it was somebody waiting for me after school about some issue with a female with long, pretty hair. I couldn't focus in school because the situation at home wouldn't allow a clear mind. I got tired of school fast. So even though I went to school, I didn't learn nothing in school. I had been in places of worship. But I had no relationship with God, brothers and sisters. It had dawned on me as a man of 30 years of age that I had never made love to a woman, had never been in love, have never felt love from a woman. So something inside of me compelled me to think and conclude that this is not natural nor normal. So a desire began to take over me. I vowed at that moment that the moment that I am capable, I will see. The moment. You can't imagine unless you've been there, and many of us have, how many nights we would sit up and just regret this, that, the other. I should have did this then. I wish I would have told her this. I should have apologized here. See, see, brothers, you giving light. See, let's just think like God thinks for a minute if we could. He say, here I will forge in this womb a living thing or creation. I will give it hands with which to touch, a mouth with which to articulate, a heart to feel, a brain to think. 
But if you don't use these things for what they are meant to be used for, then it's like not having them at all. So you may find yourself where everything that you have to do with will be crippled and taken away from you. My story. Everybody that came told their story. My story began sometime prior to December 10th, 1975, which is when I was born. Many people tell their story from as far as they can remember. But I'm going to tell you my story further than I can remember because what my mother was going through and what my father was going through prior to my conception is the seed of the root from which I came. My mother was 17 years of age. East side Detroit, just down by the river, Marlboro. My father was in his 30-somethings. Uh-oh. What, what is this all about? It, it should have been love and affection and care. But if you ask me for a 30-some-year-old man, 17-year-old woman, those things were not a part of the equation. So upon conception, I was kind of against the obvious. Because here we had pain and someone seeking for affection, amalgamating with something lustful and ill desires. And so they laid down. The rolling stone rolled the top of the rose and the thorn was produced. They say, let's name him Philip. I think that kind of messed me up too on the look. They know my mama, she's going to get a lot of heat in here today. <laughs> Philip, what is that? But anyway, as far as I can remember life, we had moved often. I mean, man, we had been everywhere on the east side you could think of and a little bit of the west side. In between moving, I spent a lot of time in Chicago, Illinois. Celebrate, honey. In Chicago, it was different than life was in Detroit. Basically, my Detroit life was this. Poverty, poverty, poverty. Marvin Gates say, I come up hard, but I come up getting down. We came up hard, brother, but we got down. We party, we laugh, we cry, we fall. Chicago was a different story. Anything I could imagine I wanted, I got. It's all right. But something still called me to the streets. What was that? See, when your home is broken or dysfunctional, you search for the things that you should get there elsewhere. I got off the porch young, brother. I come up crack era, 1980. Top 10 valleys, British night boots. My uncles, one of them is present. They was heavy in it, brother. So here I am coming up marveling at this lifestyle because what boy do you know wants to go to school in the third grade and be the object in the brunt of every joke? Because my gear isn't up to par. Tamika Stevenson, she was so pretty. I wrote a little note, I love you. Do you love me, yes or no? She said I could if you would dress better. Wow. So now self-esteem is getting wrapped up in material things. So I said I gotta figure out a way to get my act together. And here the streets I call, my best friend getting it in. He's selling a million dollars worth of product for a pair of shoes. I'm thinking he's getting over. We call it paying your dues. <laughs> right. When we would move into a new neighborhood, it's like I had to reestablish myself. In my first book that I wrote, I have a term that I call reverse racism. 
As far as I can remember, the darker-skinned brother wanted to make me eat snow, grass, take everything I had. And I didn't understand why until one day one said, you light-skinned, pretty niggas make me sick. I wanted to say it ain't my fault I'm light-skinned black <laughs> If y'all got to pardon my language, but I'm going to give it to you how I feel. But anyways, I went through that. So what happened as a result of that was complexes started to sit in. Now, I feel uptight about being light-skinned. On top of light-skinned, I probably weighed 35 pounds wet. All I had was a gun head, brother. So fighting wasn't even an option. I might go and shout it too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what looking good for the kid. New friends, a new girlfriend. Soon as I would plant myself in this situation, it would be time to uproot once again and move along, gypsy-like, wandering. So I began to say that I'm not going to open myself up to people anymore. What sense does it make to make a friend if I have to leave you tomorrow? So I began to turn inward. I became my friend. I became my worst enemy. School. Came back from Chicago, 1989. East Side looked a little different. Where Miss Johnson and, and Miss Jones lived is now a vacant lot. Kids can no longer play in the street because of drive-bys and guys busting dope fiends over the head with two by fours. Crack cocaine was the antichrist to the neighborhood, bro. Either your family got paid or you lost everything because daddy or stepdaddy or uncle or what have you got lost and turned out, bro. Women that we used to respect as our elders, Mrs. This, Miss That, coming to ask me, do I have dope and what she would do for me in exchange for that dope. So respect for the elders got lost. To some, not me, my mother didn't play that. Severe discipline that. To this day, I'm scared of her. <laughs> she didn't play disrespect. All right. But for many, respect for the elders was lost, brother. Now, of course, you know this 30-some-year-old dude, he been gone. He was gone probably when he got up. His whole objective, I believe, was to plant that accursed seed and get in trapped. So now I'm coming up asking my mother, what is wrong with me that my father don't want to be a part of this? What, what mothers don't realize is that when they condemn the father, you are condemning a part of the child. If I came from the father, you telling me this, that, and the other about the father, then what does that say about pieces and parts of me? Star rebel, of course. Fighting, getting kicked out of school. Hey, she came in here like I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to make a long, longer story short, I, I would just say that I had became the desolation around me. Since I couldn't fight, I discovered weapons. We used to call them the equalizer, meaning you can have 100 pounds on me, but I'll back you up. I can be this big, you can be this big, I'll get you a fall. See, the equalizer, the equalizer began to translate this frustration. So as the frustration grew, I wanted bigger guns. Five, six, seven shots wasn't good no more. I wanted a hundred. Take the thunder, honey. I hated myself and I hated you because you helped make me, especially if you was dark skinned. See, now I'm walking around with a point to prove. Which one I had some payback. Yup. All that snow, all that dirt. Uh-huh. Ready to deal with you now. Dudes that I had went to elementary school with it was good friends.
land where we was not enemies because they rep one thing and I represented another thing. <clears throat> An individual that I used to have severe beef with is in this room today. And I'm going to get to something that I want to tell that person. At any rate, I took to gangism or social organization. In Chicago, we call it Black Gangster Disciples. I don't know what you call it now. Two different words. I had cousins that was vice lords. Well, I have cousins that are vice lords. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we come up on the Kenwood side, Chicago. Gangster Disciples. They come up 51st Woodlawn, vice lords. So they over there, we over here. It was still love, but again, they over there, we over here. So when I came back to Detroit, I brought this gangster disciple with me. Whole new swag, baby. That little dude that you left was wearing a little button up. He goes to bubble stuff. He had had cocked his eyes with And it was a known fact. He'll let that fire go at will. Anywhere, wherever, higher. There's people in this room that can attest to that. They come here to blow no smoke at them. I became uglier than ugly, brother. So ugly that my mother would call my uncle to deal with me, and it got to a point I had to go live with him. This woman found a Uzi in the closet. Dude, you gotta go. She right here, brother. It's real talk, brother. You have to go. So now I'm saying, my family, my loved ones, since I was yay dead, what do you mean I have to go? Go where? So standing in the alley between Saratoga and Fairpress, 17, 16 years of age, I was homeless, bro. Had already been shot. Had already lost friends, some of them young as 15 years of age. So life didn't mean nothing. Family don't love me either? Okay, that don't mean nothing. So one dark, rainy night, I took to the roof. And I looked down on the cracked concrete, the potholes, the trash, the broken glass. In teary eyed, I said that this is my world. And I'm going to become God in this world. And I'm going to protect this world by any means necessary. If you are part of this world, you better get in. If you fit in, if you're not, you better leave fast. So to lay claim to this new possession, I began to write my name on the wall. If it was pretty, I tore it down and made it ugly. Why well, so that it would match my mentality? It can't be pretty because that would disturb my comfort zone. It's nasty out here. I need the environment to be just like that. I began to write my name on the yoke house, brother. Forget abandoned building. That's pretty white. You drive down Fair Crest and you can see the remnants of my work to this day, brother. Tis the reason I couldn't let Habitat for Humanity tell me no. You can't tell me no. I got more right to be there than you got to be there. I did this crap. One day, I was in the halfway house on another case. They say, you've been good enough to go on a weekend pass. Yay! <laughs> I got super fresh boy. Got a couple of dollars to hit that bus boy where I go home for a minute. After that, you know what it is. Straight to the block. See, I had built an organization, brother, that was strong, brother, and I was at the helm. But in my absence, one next to me sought my position. So I had to come deal with this. Recalcitrant behavior wouldn't be tolerated, brother. So I show up. Everything good, okay, you we'll folks gonna get part of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, okay, yeah, how you doing? And I ain't never, never dawned on me, I ain't heard from none of y'all. <laughs> During the time I was gone, but here I am, loyal as ever, front line. I remember my mom used to tell me, she said, the minute you began to be loyal to yourself, you are these niggas in the streets. 
you're going to be all right. But I had to learn the hard way, brother. So I had been meeting with some dudes around the court. They got red rags, I got on blue rags. For that, you should die. <laughs> wow, how smart is smart, brother? Do you have to say? This is what the reality was. It came down the block. Intentions clear. You don't come over here, brother, but you do. So when they hit the block, yep, Sarah told them right there, we began to scramble. Total chaos. Here they come again. You know what conditioning is? It means you've been trained to respond a certain way. I was respond when I hear gunfire, I don't get low. I focus, cock back, pay attention, and squeeze. And that's what I did, brother. He didn't give him a chance. To this day, I don't even know whether they shot or not. Smoke. Scream. I left. 1994, July, I went to her house. Somebody called me on the phone and said, man, don't come back to the hood. I say, what's up? They say, well, doing the shoot. The old child was shot in the crossfire. I dropped the phone, fell back on the porch. First thought was to go back. Because here you have a person, let's try to figure this through. Here I didn't trick myself to believe that my sole purpose is to protect this. To protect the women, the children, the elders. But yet you telling me that the result of an incident that I was involved in, that a child was shot in the crossfire. The next day, police came and got me from my mother's home. My little brother was eight years old. He stood in the window and he watched me drive away. He cried, I cried, she cried, heaven cried. During trial, I'm going to be honest with you, I had allowed what the media was saying, notorious gang leader, armed and dangerous, to compel me to believe that
plus two years for the gun for three counts of attempt to commit murder. By the way, the same dudes and the same females that I sacrificed and would have gave my life for testified against me. That's right. Mm -hmm. The same dudes that came to my block with ill intentions testified against me. 26 witnesses against me. After all I gave, where was the one person to say, he's not that type of person? So there I was with family for sure. That's why I found me away. I go to prison, 18 years old, MCU. You know what that is. I went through the dope fighting, baby. I'm young Phil, east side down, baby. Let's go. You're not taking nothing from me. I know I'm pretty. I had long hair. I'm about to fight two for nail, brother. My mom ain't raised no punk, man. I came a man. I'm going to leave a better man. I went from level two to level four in three years. Getting it in like Clint. <laughs> Religious organizations had approached me. Read this, brother. I read it, and then I looked at their conduct, and I didn't see a resemblance, so I said, that's hip hop. Another religious group. Here, brother, read this. Read it, looked at it, looked at the conduct. It didn't match. That's hypocrisy. So I did what I had been doing. Just like I was believing in the street, I became a being the joke. Sometime around 98, I was behind the wall, Jackson. We had been getting it in. Y'all know what that means, all right? We're getting it in. We're getting it in. Some dudes say, we want in. Cut us in and cut it out. The last time to suit up and fight, baby, because I can't give you nothing. During the time the fight was about to go down, some dudes intervened. Come to find out this was my homeboy from way back. He looked different. He talked different. He said, don't call me what you used to call me. Call me Blase X.
straight to level five, brother, on our own bus. Then we go, Cody. Martek, brother, level five. He went to segregation. I went to the yard. So my right hand, I'm split again. But I know how to perform. Took control. Marquette the bear of the match. He'll keep pushing me further and further. Now watch this. When I was young and game banging, I stayed in level two for four years. When I got on something positive and say stop the madness and let's learn something and go home and get free, I went from four, five, six fads. Hadn't caught a ticket in years, brother. I did two years in segregation. You know what the charge was? Too much influence. What type of influence? I wasn't running around telling nobody to harm staff or harm one another. I had not clean myself up. I was walking upright. But guess what? This is what God's work, right? Watch this. This is how I'm about to get to this. See, I'm wrapped up. In that space, there's <coughs> no more dope. Make your mind fuzzy and keep your conscious off what's really going on. No more alcohol, brother. Ain't no loud music to drown the thoughts, brother. You sitting there by yourself in your boxes, stripped down. All the delusions shattered by yourself. Boy, demons start oozing out the vents and from under the doors, man. Stanley, what Bobby Womack say, the skeletons come out the cloth and chase you all around the room. And memories stand around like ghosts and dance to sad slow tunes. If you think you're lonely, not. Tonight is the time when the needs and the Joneses start. See, this, see, so what happened was all the past, all the consciousness that came back double time smashed me to the floor. Oh, man, dude. A death happened in that cell, brother. I died up in there. I ain't want to get up. Just like I was in a halfway house, 
to come out and lose it the very same day. So I had to get rid of that stuff, man. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, it's not all the way gone, bro. But I do know how to walk away. I do know how to say I'm sorry, even if I'm not even my fault. So that's what it takes for us not to go there, because you black and you just like me. So I'm better. But anyway, I got out the hole. Went to level four, stayed there a minute. Level two, stayed there a minute. Level one. Whole world said they couldn't believe. Damn, level one. 